Last morning in the heart of Natal settler country greeted 400 top paddlers lined up for the start of the 1989 Uncomas Marathon under the Josephine's Bridge. At precisely 10 o'clock they set off. An early tussle developed between the Springbok duo of Graham Monteith and Mark Perrow here on the left and the Natal team of John Edmonds, doozy champion, and Mark Jamison, the newly capped Springbok. Paddlers come from all walks of life, from those top Springboks to the so-called fish and chips, those that are there to win the race, and those that are there to win the contest between themselves and the mighty river. The Unkamas is more than just a canoe marathon. It's an African adventure in a magnificent, pristine wilderness with an endless series of rapids to test the skill and courage of the contestants. Widely recognized as South Africa's premier trial of rough water competence, the race attracts a broad spectrum of canoeists from throughout the Republic. There can only be one winner, but the spirit of the race is embodied in those who attempt the challenge. Entering the race is a privilege, but finishing is another matter. Martin Biggs, father of former doozy winners Tim and Danny, demonstrating the Biggs' tenacity, attempting his first Umkamas at the age of 70. Meanwhile, the front group approached the strongly flowing white water, led by Springboks Oscar Chalupski and Freyland Pilyun, previous winners of this title. Big Oscar and the relatively smaller Pilyun combined remarkably well despite their size difference. The towel pairing of Mark Jamison and John Edmonds followed close behind with the Transvaalers Graham Monteith and Mark Perro holding on to third spot. The colourful pairing of Richard Black and George Green in fifth place. And these two Hilton College schoolboys revelling in the fast flowing water. Showing Transvaal's dominance in the singles race, Rising star and junior champion Robbie Herrefeld leads his more experienced fellow Transvaaler Stan Fryman in the K1 class. Although the river is only at medium to low level, rapids such as four foot drop actually become trickier in the lower water conditions and concentration is heightened with little margin for error. Smiles belie the serious problems facing paddlers who break up in the valley. Apart from the river, the only way out is on foot. That's a 25-kilometer hike. Here, two contestants are helped with the MacGyver-like repairs by local inhabitants in a spirit of camaraderie that transcends language and culture and characterizes this great event. But at the front, the relentless quest continues as the leaders power on towards the end of the first stage. pairing of Chalupski and Fulun showed total command as they sprinted for the line with doozy specialist Edmonds and SAK1 champ Jamison on their way. <laughs> Water is a nice level, nice and clean. A little bit tricky, uh, so you had to watch your lines. John drove well and we just had to keep in touch with the leaders. The water was medium low, did that affect you at all? No, it was actually very enjoyable. Uh, nice to have a clean river for a change. 
It wasn't too bad, the river was a bit low, um, but the day wasn't too long. Like Oscar said, we try and conserve our, try to conserve our energy for, for tomorrow because we think tomorrow's going to be a longer day. It's a, a combination that has proven results before the two of you won the race. Do you think uh, you see any major problem tomorrow other than that being a long day? Well, we just don't know to make mistakes. If we, tomorrow will depend on, I think the distance, we will last the distance, but a lot can happen in this race. What do you expect could happen, Oscar? Well, today I, we didn't have to pull once hard the whole day and everybody else had to work at some stage to try to catch us or do something. We completely rested for tomorrow and, and we, we can afford to let the guys go and try and catch up again, if, if, if need be. We won't take any chances because we're in front. The countdown to day two began as the paddlers prepared themselves for the pending ordeal. The boats are ready, but what are the paddlers? <laughs> hey, are we going to kill it today, boy? No problems. Except I want to change my partner. <laughs> what happened yesterday? Well, I damaged my boat and I think I damaged myself even more. <laughs> How do you feel about today? Are you at all worried about it? No, it's... Water is lovely. The, that long section after goodness where, that's a long, hard paddle. Are you fit for that? Yeah, I've taken all my tablets. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Pretty good, thank you. You're a lady in the race. How are you shaping up? Well, we didn't do fantastically yesterday, but we finished. So how, how are you feeling? Nervous. <laughs> but the nervous smiles of earlier were quickly replaced by tense concentration as the first big rapids of the day were encountered. And this is where the real character of the river unfolds. Race sponsors Graham Popelis and Yanni Klaassens pick their way carefully through Old Buck Rapid. The respected pair hold a commanding lead in the veterans' class. At the waterfall portage, Chalupski and Fulun were surprisingly nimble and took valuable seconds out of Edmonds and Jamison. held on to third place. Meanwhile, a well-rehearsed portage on the south bank by Pope Ellis and Classens goes awry due to the low water level, necessitating a somewhat unorthodox re-entry. The river funnels into the notorious gully. Shooting Whirlpool successfully is exhilaration personified. Others are not so lucky and Springbok Chris Kreef is swallowed by the turbulent waters. One to the paddlers, one to the river. Springbok Sean Rice and Colin Simpkins shared a similar fate, but Rice managed a miraculous recovery rolling his 6-meter K2 alone in a maneuver normally reserved for slalom and white water boats. Up front, Oskar Chalupski and Freyland Fulun surge onto the finish. With no challengers in sight, a victory is theirs. A hard last-minute duel is fought out for the remaining top positions. Graham Popelis completes the Grand Slam for the fastest time for Doozy, Unkamas and the 50-miler. So Chalupski and Fulun, three and a half minutes ahead of second place Edmonds and Jamison, who are five minutes ahead of the third place Transvalers Perro and Monteith. In the singles, it was Nico Fulun coming home ahead of Herefeld with Stanley Fryman third. The race is over. The river moves on. These are the men and women who embrace the great Unkamas, the Kevlar Knights. Sharing danger, fear, adventure, laughter, elation, and tears.
a special breed, a special river. <laughs>